What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. It's today we're going to be breaking down three things that wide receivers can add to their toolbox, to their tool belt, to make them the best route runner on their team. So I hope this video helps you guys out. We're going to be talking about how you guys can attack the leverage of the DB, knowing when to attack the leverage of the DB, and how to exactly do that. And then we're going to talk about how you guys can make your releases, your routes all look the same to keep a DB guessing. So I hope this video helps you guys out. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to get some work in with us this offseason, I'm sure you've heard about this, but we're we're traveling out to four more states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So next up, we were coming out to Dallas, Texas. Then we're heading out to Nashville, Tennessee on July 2nd and 3rd. Then we're going to Salt Lake City, Utah, and then Los Angeles, California. So if you guys want some more information on that, check out that very first link in the description below. If you've seen any videos from our camps, it's not the big 55 plus kids to a group camps. We're keeping it small. So there's a lot of detailed instruction for two whole days. So check out that very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So now this first route here, off man coverage inside shade, he is going to be running a post route. So the main thing is when you see off man coverage, you have to know why a DB is playing in off man coverage first, right? Your pre-snap process, what you should be thinking is, okay, he's this, he's this leverage. Why is he playing this leverage? And what's going to beat this leverage with the route that I'm given? That's it. That has to be what you're, what's on your mind, but it has to be a quick one breath, one thought. So this wide receiver does a perfect example of attacking the outside shoulder in this scenario, right? So a lot of people think that anytime that you see this kind of coverage inside shade off man, whether it's an out route, whether it's a post route, a dig route, whatever it is, you have to uh, stem him and attack his leverage. But let me tell you something about this TB. He's inside shade for a reason. He's inside shade to protect the inside. He does not, he does not want to give up the post. He does not want to give up the dig. He does not want to give up the deep skinny, the curl. He wants to take all of that away and force you to the sideline because the sideline is his head help. If he was outside leverage, it would be different. He'd want to force you to the inside because he probably has safety help. So we know this as a wide receiver that if I tried to stem him and attack his leverage, he's just going to keep his leverage because he, again, his sole purpose with this coverage is to prevent anything inside. So you try to attack inside, he's going to keep inside and you're going to end up running the post right into him. So you would want to attack his outside shoulder because the only goal that we have, the, our best bet is trying to get him to flip his hips and commit to the fade or bite on some kind of outside fake to a corner or an out. So there's a couple different ways you can go about this. Now, a lot of wide receivers don't do this. They make the mistake that I was talking about. They'll just attack his leverage and then they think, oh, well, I'm just going to get him to backpedal. He won't do that, especially if he's a talented DB. You have to threaten him outside. So this wide receiver decides to go with this rocker step at the top of the break, threatening like he's running an out route, a corner route. And that's what can get that DB to open up his hips so we could slip back underneath and get some space. Now, not to mention, if you guys stem way to the inside and this DB weaves, the spacing of the route is off. We have to keep spacing and we have to keep timing. And when you attack that outside shoulder, that is how we do this. So what is a rocker step? So a rocker step is a move that I love against this coverage because it can really sell the outside. When you do a rocker step, instead of just running a post off of like one step, your outside foot, you do a one, two at the top of the break, kind of like a crossover. So when he does this one, two, what does he sell with? He sells with that upper body, his hips and his shoulders are both committed outside. Everything about this right here looks like an outside breaking route. And that is what's going to get the DB to move. You could do a couple things. You do this rocker step, or you could just run at his outside shoulder, keep the hips and the shoulders committed vertical to get him to bail out of there. And then we slip back underneath, but it all comes down to your speed where you angle your stem, and then that body language, because that is what the DB is paying attention to. So make sure, fellas, we know when to attack leverage, when to not attack leverage. You would attack this leverage like he's running a post route, right? Let's say the DB was outside shade. That's when you'd attack his leverage. You would come off the line. You'd go at his leverage to widen him. And because again, he's got safety help, but that creates a bigger window over the middle. And you could still use that rocker step. You could attack him outside rocker step, but now I have a bigger window to the safety help. Just like when I attack his outside shoulder, I would have a bigger window to operate back inside. So again, let's play this thing full speed. Make sure we know how to attack leverage, when to attack leverage, and how to attack that off man look when I'm coming off the line. That's, that's one of the key things to being the best route runner on your team. You have to know what to do. It's not necessarily how to do it. Yeah, we could learn that all the time. I could teach you how to do all kinds of moves, but when are you actually going to use it? When are you actually going to use that rocker step? When are you actually going to use that stem that we worked on that we've talked about? And it's in these situations, fellas. So now I'm going to play the last clip first here because it builds into that second clip. So next thing I want to talk about is how wide receivers can pair releases and routes together. So when you guys face a talented DB, 
maybe at the high school level, maybe at the youth level, you may not see so much of this. A smart guy will, but when you get to college, I guarantee it. And when you get to high school, I guarantee it. But in, in high or in, in the like in the NFL level, I guarantee it. But when you're in high school, you'll probably get a smarter DB coach, not so much a DB, right? That's going to study film and is going to try to look for our tendencies. As a coach who's coached in a program before, we spend a lot of time um, studying tendencies. What does a defense like to do? You know, what do they come out in X amount of percent of the time? 70% of the time they're in cover four. Okay, 10% of the time they go cover zero. So we can structure our game plan accordingly. Defenses do the same thing, and a smart DB will do the same thing with our releases, with our routes. But how we get separation is by making ourselves unpredictable. So I'm going to play this first release here. This is going to be a slant release. Now, this is a longer release, so you got to make sure we know how to do this in the right situation. So this wide receiver comes off, gives a jab, hesitates to the outside, and gives a little diamond release. So let's talk about this. Now, again, this is a very long release. You want to use this in the right situation. You want to use this when the quarterback's in like a three-step drop back footwork out of gun or five-step under center, or if the quarterback is doing like a play action, like zone read, and it's like an RPO slant because you have to take some time. You don't want to rush the RPO. So this is not for every situation, but this doesn't mean you can't do this for every situation with a different release. So what does he do off the line? He's got inside coverage. We got to run the slant. We know we want to attack his outside shoulder. So he comes off here, gives a jab. Now he hesitates to the outside and toes three steps on this 45 to get that DB to fight to the fade, get him to overcommit to the fade so we could slip back underneath and win on this route. Now, the next clip I'm going to show you guys is going to be the exact same thing, the exact same tempo, but instead of running a slant route, he's going to run a fade route and we're going to drop this ball in the bucket over the top. So the both build off of each other, fellas. When that DB overcommits to that fade, we know that we're going to get him with a slant. When he wants to sit to the inside and try to be disciplined, we know we're going to get him with a fade if I make my releases look the same because that makes him play a guessing game. Let's say every time you run a slant as a wide receiver, you do this. You give him a move inside, you hesitate, you take three steps to the outside, and you run this slant. And that's the only time you ever do a hesitation move. That DB will be all over that thing if he's smart. Because he knows the next play, when he sees you come off the line and he sees you hesitate like this, he's just going to sit right there. He's going to be like, fine by me. Run the slant to me. I've seen this before on film. I've seen you do this in a game. I'm not going to get beat by this because that's the only thing that you have. Now, as a wide receiver, I can structure that to my advantage. I can start doing things that look exactly like that to keep the DB on his toes. So I'm going to play this full speed, and then we're going to play the next clip. So again, jab, hesitate, three steps outside, and run the slant like kind of on a diamond release. So now let's look at the next one. So he's here, jab inside, hesitate, take off. Gives a little crossover move inside and take off and go run that thing to the fade. So same exact speed, same exact tempo, same exact idea. Attack him inside, hesitate, then he goes one, two, three, four, right? And that jab to the inside makes it look exactly like the slant. DB sitting to the inside, patient because he does not want to get beat on the slant route again. And that opens up that fade for us. So fellas, that is the name of the game. Now, again, you don't have to add this hesitation to it. Maybe we just do the straight diamond release. Because, like, you might ask me, okay, well, coach, that works if it's a slower developing slant. But what if I run a lot of quick slants, like a lot of quick three-step slants, and the quarterback's just catching it and throwing it? Okay, instead of me doing a jab, instead of me hesitating, maybe I just take three steps to the outside. Maybe I just go right, so I step with the right foot, left foot, right foot. I go one, two, three, and then I throw a jab move back inside four. So I could do a diamond release and run a slant. I could go a one, two, three, four, threaten him inside, get him to hold inside, and go run the fade. It's all relative, fellas, but you have to find ways to pair your releases together. And that's it. That's all you really like when it comes to off the line stuff, it's not complicated. I, I get so sick of these coaches and these receivers doing all these complex releases that do not do anything for you. And again, I understand the, the concept of I understand why people work it. I get it, because you want to change tempo, you want to keep the DB on his toes. But it's not that complicated. You don't need to do that. It's an IQ thing. How can you build your releases off one another? How can you make your releases look the same and keep the DB on his toes? That is the name of the game. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. So, fellas, if you're a high school wide receiver, younger wide receiver, and you want to be the best route runner on your team, you want to get more separation, you want to stand out at camps, you want to stand out to coaches, make your releases and routes look similar. Okay, fellas? All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions, any ideas for the channel, videos you'd like to see next, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We uh, always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, if you guys would like to get some work in with us, this 
this offseason. We're traveling out to Dallas, Nashville, Salt Lake City, and Los Angeles, California for two-day long camps. Again, this is not going to be like a combine-style camp where we just get out the stopwatch and time your 40s and then send you home. We're actually going to teach you for two whole days. It's more like a retreat-style camp, a lot of reps, four hours each day, and it's in a small group setting. So I hope you guys could check that out, fellas. I hope you're interested in that. We'd love to have our YouTube community out to one of our camps if you're local to those areas. I'll see you guys next time.